mandatory things in your week that are that can be viewed many ways rehab prehab um stability whatever you want to call it but common issues in strongman hips lower back shoulders knees um the, these things are problems that crop up in acute periods usually like it's very rare to get a training phase where you're like wow like i didn't have a single thing happen like my last log peak i had forearm tendonitis first time i've ever had forearm tendonitis in my life but i got forearm tendonitis because i was going into like um this deviation with the wrist as i cleaned because the load got so heavy that my I just literally flexed down and I'd have to pull up to keep my wrist neutral on the clean. And I think that was what caused it. Um, and um, yeah, basically if we include mandatory things in the program that can help stop that from cropping up, I believe it gives a higher opportunity to have a successful training block. So for example, in the app, the things that I made mandatory weekly are foot control and hamstring isolation. I made shoulder stability, hip and knee stability. And oh, wait, 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 wait there, wait there. Tell, tell us that in a sec. So we're just talking about the problems here. So trust me, I'm going to lead you on to this in a minute. Just to, just to, to the, the problem, like what, like... Yeah, so the problem... People come, are getting niggles. People are getting niggles all the time and you feel like it's avoidable. Like... Yeah. I feel um, like not entirely, I mean, some, um, I, I know quite recently I've got into a lot of um, like movement coaching and some, some different kind of stuff with my strength and conditioning. They, they really believe, these people I speak to, they really believe that injuries are 100% avoidable. I personally don't agree with that. And I think it's because they don't, I mean, I, they, they, they are mainly work with other sports and I'm obviously a strong man. And in this group that I'm kind of involved in at the moment, I'm the only strongman coach there. And I think it's a bit different. They're talking about athletics and stuff. And I'm talking about people running with 400 kilos on the back. I think that one wrong step here and there can cause a niggle. It's, it's not completely preventable. However, if we do have things in there to strengthen and keep ourselves in a state of homeostasis with our movement, for example, um, hip external rotation, is extremely common uh, in strongman to have either weak external rotators or have poor external rotation mobility. And this can cause issues in people's gait. And then if that's an issue when you're running with farmers and yokes, etc., it can end up coming into the hip flexors and then, you know, pinching around into the lower back. Well, how can, you know, I've noticed that is a common issue in strongman what is the fix for that? Well, if we just do hip airplanes, then we are strengthening every single muscle that gets weak and we're also opening up external rotation. So I added that into the MST Big Five that you do before you train every single session. The amount of messages I've had saying, just go to my latest Instagram post. There's a couple of people commenting there about the MST Big Five saying how it's helped the hips because they were like, my hips have never felt better because I'm getting them to train the adductor with uh, the the um, we've got like a hip stability section that really focuses on adductor. Adductor is extremely undertrained and starts to pull you into internal rotation when it gets tight. So we train and isolate the adductor so that we get a proper setting of the femur, and then we make sure we can open up externally with the hip airplane, which then sets the pelvis into the correct position. And all these little things take five minutes a couple of times a week to do so if you build them in your training structures habits and you just do them you might find that you, your next yoke peak you do or whatever you don't get them pains in your hips when you're running or your lower back doesn't go so that's what i see as an issue is not not having yeah just like a man habitual things people do to keep themselves ready even if they never need to do them it doesn't matter that they're investing that extra five minutes in it because it's not too much of a, you know, for the ROI, it's worth it. You know what I mean? Brilliant. So the three things <clears throat> that we've covered, 
that fr- that you you see as frustrations that you see in strongman programming, strongman coaching, overhead programming, um, looking to people looking too short term, and also putting um, regular things in the training week to like kind of maintain your maintain homeostasis really and just maintaining make make sure you feel well so these three things that you've talked about what's the solution like what's your solution in terms of your 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 programming does the um how does your structure how does your methodology cover this so we just have basically yeah built a system that has mandatory um movement patterns in and mandatory things you've got to hit and once you kind of learn it i mean literally you can download the app and each day is kind of outlined you see like you see everything um and um, and obviously in the app i've made it so that things are on a certain day however when i program individually i can obviously hip stability is on session three in the app basically but i might put hip stability here you know there but hip stability is in my programming. So it doesn't yeah. just get it's for one person. Like it's a, like I, when I write a program, I'm like, he needs hip stability. So I always make sure that that's somewhere. Yeah. And well, and then it's like, well, what is hip stability? Well, it depends on the in- individual and what I see as their issue. And I've got probably 30 different exercises that I commonly use and rotate through that you can select in the app to basically fix your issue. So each um, exercise will have a description next to it to tell you what the issue is that it fixes. So if you think you've got external rotation issue, you can read a few things and and do that. So that's basically what we've built on the shoulder stability section. Like shoulder stability is something that you can utilize in so many different fun and interesting ways if you understand how it works. For example, you've got like trap free raises, rear delts, external rotations that are just isolations of little muscles. However, you can go in opposite direction with shoulder stability. And let's say you wanted someone to peak the dumbbell press. Well, they can only dumbbell press once a week on a Saturday and they want to they want to get the biggest dumbbell possible. Well, on the other pressing day, how about we add some shoulder stability movements in? with a kettlebell windmill and a half Turkish get up. And we try to get the kettlebell windmill up to 50% of the max dumbbell load is a little ratio that I, I like to use. And um, you know, the half Turkish get up sets of like five to six, at a similar, uh, similar weight, you know, say one for hundred dumbbell, 50 kilo on, on, on the pair. And, and this way we've now changed the shoulder stability from isolating little muscle groups to going through a full range of motion whilst you know in um the overhead position so when they go to do the dumbbell work later in the week we've got this complementary um exercise selection going on and like i say it's just tools in the tool shed that we can grab out someone might be able to copy the shoulder stab section and, and all the things we use but, but when is the right time to apply each one for in the individual where the weaknesses lie that's where the kind of skill comes in and um in terms of the volume but, 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 to, but to be clear though like it could because what, what's so great about what you're developing now is like you've had the kind of premium service for a little while where basically if people can afford personal coaching they get this fucking world-class service, yeah? But the thing that you've developed more recently is like this accessibility thing to for every budget, yeah? For every for, for everybody to, to, if you're gonna, look, well, everybody to experience this kind of, the, the, this yeah, kind I, of problem I, to these solutions. I genuinely think that most people, like nine, eight, 80% of people, can just use that app and be fucking fine. Like it, re- it really is that simple because ev- literally every, in terms of training programming, everything's in there. Unless you want a coach's eye to look at issues and fix issues, then uh, if you're just happy to crack on me, if you just want the programming, then like the, the, the app literally, it just literally does it all, all, all for you to, to be straight. The, the benefits to a coach is gonna be the coach's eye and 
positional changes and, and maybe maybe slight volume adjustments because the app's never going to get your individual volume absolutely perfect. Because if I was watching it myself, I might go, oh, he's, he's doing two sets too many there. You know, he's fatiguing in that like, little eight two sets of shite. We'll, we'll, we'll trim him down. So there's obviously adjustments like that that, that will benefit. But, but yeah, in terms of programming, it's pretty... Um, so, yeah, so in, ter in terms of uh, looking at the, the the second issue that we talked about about the longer term longer term approach, like can, can they do that within the app? Obviously, you can do yeah, that. So, yeah. So basically, you've got your skill phases or your um, peaking phases, and you can build a program. What I've told people in the app is at least rotate uh, skill peak skill peak each one's eight weeks long so that means that if you wanted to peak your deadlift it would be a four month peak because you would do uh, two uh, two months of accumulation then you would go into your peak so you're laying your foundation down working on your weaknesses then you transition into extract that strength obviously if you're a PED user you would be using um you know, you, you, you would up your gear or whatever the hell you wanted to do if you were doing that um, during your peaking phase and you would just be kind of chilling out during your, your accumulation block. But the more advanced you get, the more accumulation you need to do. So you might have to do two prep phases and drag a bit longer. Like you might do a snatch grip accumulation phase because that's a really weak lift then you transition to a normal deadlift accumulation to get you back used to that position, then you peak on it, and then you've laid kind of two foundations down before peaking. But, yeah, the app literally um, allows you to do that. And you can you can program how I program. Like I say, I do phases within phases. So your deadlift, you might do accumulation, accumulation, peak. But your log, you might be peaking your log whilst your accumulation on your snatch grip deadlift. You don't have to just build the whole phase as one. You can separate everything into the sections you want. And that way you can be like, well, while I'm doing my snatch grip deads, they're a little lighter. I'm going to peak my log. Oh, now I'm peaking my deadlift. I'm going to go into a volume phase on the log because I want this. And that's how I program is I'll tend to keep I tend to keep one or two things as the focus on a peak because I just don't agree. Just from my own experience, I don't like peaking multiple things at once. I just get, basically, I, I tend to have one or two good sessions a week. And the, the other sessions I call, right, put the put the graft in, you know what I mean? Like mindless thinking. I can see my volume. I just got to do it kind of thing. It sucks, but just do it. Whereas the peaking phase, that's more like I'm thinking about that number that I'm hitting all week it's very emotionally in, investing so waking up in neutral grit exactly you know what it's like but i find that stuff draining job don't you like, yeah 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 definitely definitely yeah like like you say it's it's emotional isn't it it's like you think you're going to the shop you're like you're just thinking about it all the time i get it so yeah. so t tell us about the um like how, how can we 